rights in America deserve our own nation. I know that it's very likely that I will lose my life. I knew that when I got involved in this. Here in Boston, tensions remain extraordinarily high, and there are no signs that America's two fronts in the new political fight club show any signs of standing down. Get the f out! Get the f out, Boston! And we'll stop! by these Nazi racists. We seen what happened in Charlottesville. If I gotta die for all, for, for my nieces, for my nephew, for, for white babies, for black babies, if I gotta die to see him have a better life, then I'm a dead mother All day long, we've seen individuals that the, the crowd thinks are Trump supporters or white nationalists, and all hell rains down on them. You will be afraid! You will be afraid! Thousands of counter-protesters here overwhelmed the planned alt-right rally, and the couple dozen who did attend had to be escorted out by police. You regret coming? Go away! No, I'm looking for the Yo, get moving, get moving, get moving! But white supremacists across the country are re-energized after Charlottesville. So we've just arrived at the Southern Poverty Law Center. It's a group that monitors hate activity in the real world and now more and more online. In all the years that we've been tracking, we've never seen this many of these groups everywhere. We've never seen their ideas penetrating the mainstream in the way that they are. Heidi Byrick is the director of the SPLC's Intelligence Project. CBS News is the first major network she allowed into their secure facility where they monitor hate group activity online. How worried should Americans be looking at this map of activity? Well, I would say most Americans don't realize how much there is of this. There's more than 900 hate groups. They define hate groups as organizations with beliefs that attack an entire people. Two thirds of the groups they are watching subscribe to ideals of white supremacy. And last week's rally in Charlottesville is considered the largest white supremacy march in decades. You had militiamen, you had Klansmen, you had neo-Nazis. And one of the scarier things is when you have a united movement, right? That means something at the ballot box. The number of hate groups has doubled during the past two decades, with spikes in 2000 after the census announced that white Americans would soon become a minority, and again when America's first black president won re-election. So can you show us some of the specific individuals who are on your radar? This, for example, is our profile of Matt Heimbach. He's been involved in white supremacy forever. If you had called me 10 years ago, I would have told you that the white supremacist movement in the United States was dying. We have a whole layer of millennial leadership in the hate movement that has come out of nowhere in the last four or five years. The Southern Poverty Law Center says 26-year-old Matt Heimbach is the new face of fascism. He was one of the main organizers of the Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville, which he considered a success, despite the fact a white supremacist allegedly murdered counter-protester Heather Heyer. So Charlottesville is a win. Stunning victory. The best. Bigly. <laughs> so in the run-up to Charlottesville, there's energy. You're adding members. Why? Well, we have energy, I think, because Donald Trump's election showed that the majority of white America, especially working class America, believes in sovereignty. I'm going to run through a list and you tell me yes or no if, if the term describes you. Sure. Okay? White nationalist. Yes. Neo-Nazi. Uh, national socialism is built on eternal principles. So the idea of new... So maybe Nazi. Uh, that's a slur that was developed by Jewish newspapers in Germany in the 1920s. He wouldn't admit to being a Nazi on camera, but he believes in their ideology. Your enemy is the international Jew, and we cannot avoid that. And what he's doing is repackaging what many see as old-fashioned white supremacy. So scanning the pictures in Charlottesville, it was obvious that a lot of the people holding the torches were wearing collared shirts, mm -hmm. polo shirts. Yep. It's not a hood and a robe. Has there been some sort of a concerted rebranding of what it is to be a supremacist? Well, the dry cleaning bills are a lot cheaper, okay. so that's a good thing. 
He tried to dismiss that with a joke, but his hateful ideology is anything but. He denies the Holocaust, he wants to create an all-white nation, and this fall, Heimbach says he is beginning to recruit candidates to run in local elections. As Adolf Hitler said, he who controls the youth controls the future, and that is so true when it comes to our situation. We're going to be running for your local school board. We're going to be running for your local county council. What's the point of that? Being able to have an influence in the local community to show that nationalists can have better governance than the two broken political parties. Only about a thousand people have joined his political party, but the idea that white America is discriminated against is growing. In fact, nearly seven in 10 white American workers without a four-year college degree or salary job, along with a majority of the public overall, believe the U.S. is in danger of losing its culture and identity. Anytime a country goes through demographic change, it's difficult. Uh, we had a hard time in this country digesting people that we now consider white, but we didn't back in the 1900s. It is entirely possible that that's what we could face here, right? Um, a full racist backlash in terms of policy and everything else uh, against people of color in this country. Do you think we're going to see white nationalists openly running and potentially winning office? Maybe. I expect more of these people are going to pop up. They're interested in politics. They didn't care before. They thought Republicans were as bad as Democrats, nobody wanted them, and they couldn't influence the political system. Now they don't feel that way. I have had companies like Microsoft, Facebook, Twitter, Uber. It's almost the 21st century act of war. Hacking. Hacking. The medical industry is the new number one target for hackers. This is a form of terrorism. They do have a person who's been shot, and now they're trying to find a suspect. Every journalist is a target now in Mexico. If you f up, you're dead. You don't kill the truth by killing journalists.